can you give a look for the person to infect her? Once it gets to see her cell, okay. if you see here, these are the, the speckles like the structures you are seeing, right? The boundaries. These are the processes actually. which you have, uh, you know, like those puffer chromosomes, you know? Anyway, let me tell you this. Drosophila are um, a very useful tool to answer very fundamental biological questions. So, some questions that we have addressed in fruit flies in, uh, lie chiefly in the side of development. So, for example, from these pupae is what you get adults. So, what you're looking at in this box, these are what adults look like. Now, it's important that we keep the, uh, the uh, different kinds of lice separately. So if there's one mutation on a chromosome, you can make sure that all the parents and the children have the same genotype, they have the same mutations. Which is why, if there's a mutation that causes a change in wing formation, we can ensure that all the parents and the progeny have the same mutation. Why is that important? What do you learn from a wingless fly? Turns out the proteins that cause the change in wing formation in flies are the ones that are responsible for cells talking to each other, telling them, telling the cell next to it that this is what you have to do. In fact, changes in this protein in humans can is responsible for quite a few cancers or suppressing cancers. And these are the things we This is Yes. Yeah. You all know any uh, pathogen that causes disease on plants? Gentlemen, have you thought here? Yeah. Nice. What else? Yes. Yeah. So that's something that we specifically work on, hence I was not, uh, I was surprised to hear. So there is a pathogen called Xanthomonas oryzae, right? My microbiologists might know, yeah. So they uh, cause a disease on, uh, specifically on rice plants. Two varieties, for example, one variety has your trait of interest. The other variety is a very widely grown but it doesn't have the trait of interest. So you transfer the trait from one variety to the other by doing crosses, right? So then this is how the crossing is done. So that is one aspect. We also work on other uh, diseases caused by fungal pathogens. So this is a fungus which is growing on this plate and this fungus is called as, called as Rhizoctonia solani. You heard Rhizoctonia? So it's, it's a fungus, okay? So uh, like that there are many other pathogens that affect rice and we try to characterize how rice can gain resistance against them so that we can give such varieties to the farmers where these diseases are highly seen. Right? Apart from that, we also try to understand how plants cope up with environment and try to understand the genetic basis of it. So you see here, this is also a rice plant. But what is the color of this? Purple color, right? You hardly see purple varieties. At least within crops, you don't often see it. Right? It's because basically, they, it's a naturally occurring variety. We do not do any change to the plant. But it accumulates more as in uh, a particular pigment called as anthocyanin. Uh, yeah, have you heard of the term anthocyanin? Yeah. Right. So more accumulation of anthocyanin results in purple color. Now this this plant sort of. Uh,
because your particles are there in the liquid, you throw it a laser and then you see those uh, detectors, uh, they will be there and there we will detect the molecules and basically you will get the size of the biomolecules. So basically it depends on the Brownian motion. So you know Brownian motion, how zigzag motion is there. So to understand, so when you actually give a laser light, these Brownian a motion is happening because of these particles inside the paper. Similarly, there is circular dichromism which basically provides you the secondary structures of proteins and also nucleic acids, basically the RNA. And also if the reality is there in your protein, uh, like left-handed and right-handed, so you can understand that basically because of the circular dichromism. So there are two techniques. And the subatomic elements like proton, neutron, and get because they get imagine them as you know the spinning molecule, and they also have a magnetic field. But this magnetic field is oriented randomly, you know, you know, but when we you know apply the external magnetic field, they elect. So the protein, we need a homogeneous structure or uh, solid of the protein. For that, we, uh, after purification, we crystallize the protein and that crystal we bombard with x-rays. So after that, the, uh, we get a pattern which we use to develop the model of the protein. So this is a like, hundred years old method that still has been going on and still giving us useful insights in protein structure.